Delicious singing apes of Asia. Their magical love songs herald the coming of each new day. Now their songs are falling silent as Indonesia's forests are destroyed. But help is at hand from an unexpected place. Good morning, In Borneo, there's a radio station with a distinctive new sound. It's the brainchild of 29-year-old Tani. His life's mission is to save the kitten. It's a journey that has taken him away from his native France and deep into the heart of Borneo. He's developed a talent for helping givens to fall in love, and he uses the airwaves to spread his message. And it's nice also to save animals with good music. Music and matchmaking are helping Tani achieve his lifelong ambition, giving these wonderful singing apes the chance of life in the wild. <laughs> Today, Chani and his team are on a rescue mission to the remote town of Tumbang Samba. So the plan is to try to find some animal over there and hopefully rescue them and release them into the wild. Chani was just 18 years old when he first arrived in Borneo. His fascination with Gibbons began as a teenager in France. It was a desire to see him in the wild that first brought him to Asia. But it was here in Borneo that he realized just how precarious the Gibbons' existence was and his childhood passion became a lifelong commitment to save the given. Ten years ago, Tani established the Callaway Foundation. The word Callaway means given in the local language. Before to go into the town, we need to clean the sign so people know Callaway is coming and sometimes people just come and give us animals when they realize the Callaway team is wrong. The town of Tumbang Samba is in an area where illegal logging, deforestation and gold mining are widespread. This has led to a boom in the number of gibbons who end up in captivity. Although it's illegal to keep a gibbon as a pet, there may be as many as 300,000 captive gibbons across Indonesia. The team discover that in this town, even the local policeman has a pet gibbon. She's badly malnourished, far too small for her age. Chani can tell she's been fed mostly on rice. Callaway have arrived just in time to rescue this gibbon. Chani has secured an island in the middle of the forest. It's here that he brings animals rescued from the pet trade. Hapapak Island provides a home for nearly 150 gibbons. But this unique sanctuary is a temporary home. Chani's ultimate aim 
is to release his precious gibbons back into the wild. What I just interest in the beginning. Why is that so different? Why is it so difficult to take care of them? Why, why is so many of them die in captivity? And with time, I start to understand them. And that's when I start to love gibbons and be specialized in gibbons. I like to say I, I speak gibbons. Adult gibbons live as couples and are fiercely territorial. If an adult is released alone, it's likely to be attacked or even killed by a wild pair. For this reason, the most crucial part of the rehabilitation process is a successful pairing with a mate. But that's no easy task. It's not like chicken. You can't put one male and one female in one cage and fulfill it with a good pair. Uh, you need to find the, the right character, the right given with the right partner. Luckily for these individuals, Chani has been pairing given since he was a teenager, volunteering at French zoos. And now, he's the most experienced given matchmaker in the world. Today, Chani is assessing which gibbons might make a good couple. He's helped by Leo, the camp paramedic, and Nanto, the staff manager. Yeah. It's the key of the rehabilitation. Gibbons have to be in pair to be released. We never know if it will work, but what we can anticipate is who will be the boss in the enclosure. In every pair, we have one dominant. Sometimes is a female, sometimes is a male. If both women don't want to be dominated, they will fight until one die. When gibbons are paired, there are three potential outcomes. Aggression, indifference, or attraction. Chani may be an expert, but it's an inexact science. Bundat, a young male, is unaware he's about to be introduced to Leone, a young female. The best plan is to release the gibbon in a new enclosure, so they don't feel like it's my enclosure and somebody is coming in. Each gibbon has to be tranquilized before being moved. Just like the local Dayak hunters, the team use blowpipes. Surgical masks are essential to prevent the transmission of human diseases. The dart delivers a mixture of the sedative ketamine and an anticonvulsant. Usually the tranquilizer takes effect within minutes. Leone is already waking up from her sedation. So these two humans, Leone and Moon, that have been for pet for many, many years uh, in a very small cages in town. So now they can be mixed and hopefully if everything is going well, one day they will come back into the wild. Sleepy Bundad is put into the new enclosure first. Both Leone and Bundad were snatched from their parents as youngsters. This will be the first time either has ever met or touched another of their kind. The team anticipate that Bundad will establish himself as a dominant gibbon in their relationship. However, Leone is eating all the bananas. 
taking advantage of the fact that Bullard has yet to recover from his sedation. But there are some positive signs. I think it's good because the female Lini uh, only tells Mao uh, is the boss. I mean, she come close to him and she do it right now. A uh, little grooming to him and it's mean, okay, you're the boss, no worries, you don't have to attack me. And it's what we, we want. Uh, just in the few first minutes, uh, the situation in the cage is, is clear, who is dominant. But we still have to be careful because the man, Bundat, is not yet fully awake. And we still have to wait to be sure everything will be okay. Although Hamper Pack offers hope for a lucky few, there are far too many captive gibbons in Borneo for Callaway to rescue them all. Chani has realized that the key to the survival of gibbons in the wild is raising public awareness. Down river from Hamper Pack is the bustling town of Palankaraya. Many people here make their living from the timber trade or the palm oil industry. Chani has found a unique way of gaining local support in his fight to save the gibbon. Good morning, Kalimantan. Bagaimana kabarnya? Kita mulai lagi dengan Shani dalam acara Good Morning Kalimantan. Selamat dua jam sampai jam sembilan pagi kita akan bersama. Seperti biasa. In 2003, Radio Callaway, Radio Gibbon, was born. Untuk Shani untuk menyelamatkan satwa liar. In between playing the latest hits, Shani asks people to call in if they or anyone they know is keeping a wild animal in captivity. Satu orang akan mendapat satu kaos dan five times every hour. He pushes his conservation message. Managed by a Chinese wife, Prada. Radio Gibbon is aimed at a young audience. Most of them since are aged between 15 and 25. They like Halloween because it's cool. It's uh, lots of modern music. It's a very modern image, and the young love that. We have to give them what they want, but between every two or three songs, we have this short message about conservation. So it's working very well, very happy. And it's nice also to sell animals with good music. At Hamper Pack, the weekly delivery of bananas has arrived. Keeping the gibbons fed and watered twice a day is a costly and time-consuming operation. Chani employs a team of 35 local villagers to do the job. Every week, the animals get through 5,000 kilograms of fruit. It's Leona and Bundad's first dinner together as a couple. Chani has brought Prada and their son Andrew to watch. Unfortunately, 
The only desire to get the fight first is causing conflict. Now that Baldad is fully awake, there are worrying signs. Leonie doesn't want to be dominated by him. And at the same time, the female came first, and she was eating alone all the food. This means that the male feels too confident, and he don't want that, he wants to be the boss. It can be dangerous because you don't get it yet, and if no one between Bondat and Leonie accept to be dominated, they can eat kill each other. The new couple have got off to a rocky start. It's vital they resolve their differences. For now, all Chen can do is keep a careful eye on Leonie and Bundad. Separating them only if the arguments get out of hand. links to the timber industry and the clearing of the forest have left him with a few souvenirs. This gibbon is badly stressed. So now we're waiting for the guy who owns this gibbon. Hopefully he will give us the opportunity to rescue these animals, but it's no guarantee at all. Chani tries to negotiate with the owner. Although keeping pet gibbles is illegal, Chani is powerless to force him to hand over the animal. Cute young gibbons make appealing pets. But confined in small cages, once they reach adolescence, they begin to experience extreme stress. So he say, for the moment he don't really want to give us uh, the given. It's very sad because it's very poor condition. It's a female. She will probably die also in a few months if we don't receive her because she's already big. So she's very sensitive of, from stress. And so we just try again. <laughs> To leave now without the gibbon. Uh, the man say will call me in the next two days, but I'm not very optimistic. Uh, we can do nothing because we are not the police, and for sure the police will not confiscate these animals. And he was very surprised when I tried to explain to him that the gibbon lives 30 years in the wild, and he was like, oh. I was thinking we just live around the five or seven years because they have given before and they always die before seven. In the past, Chinese collaborated with the police who confiscated captive gibbons. But he and the organization suffered alarming repercussions. His houseboat was sunk, the Callaway's office vandalized, and he was even attacked by a man with a knife. We did many confiscations in the past, but all the time it's a lot, a lot of trouble for us, and it can be dangerous for us. We can have an attack at the office days or weeks after the confiscation. So, we'll see. Back 
Jackal Hamper Pack, feeding times had devastating consequences for Leone. She refused to accept Bundad as the boss, and as a result, he attacked her. Leone's injuries require stitches. Just after I left her with Bundat, uh, she get uh, bite by, by Bundat very badly. You can see we are lucky. Leonie just get these small injuries. You can kill her. There's no chance of reconciliation for Leonie and Bundat. The team have no option but to try pairing them with different mates in the future. So after this bad experience for Leonie, she need to be alone for a while, and after that we will try to pair her with another male, but probably we will try with a very calm and quiet male, who will accept to be dominated by a female. So it will be the next step for her, if she wants one day come back into the wild. Of course she won't. Jani has had a lot of success with the rather more complicated task of matchmaking gibbons, and Hamperpack is home to many happy couples. A sure sign of a strong pair is a baby, and some of the females are pregnant, including Tonti and Sisi. Sisi is due to give birth any day now. Danny and the team are planning another blind date. They're going to introduce Holly, a young female, to Habia, a male who's been at Hamper Pack for five years. We tried to make a pair a few months ago, but it was not working very well. Uh, it was not very aggressive to the female, but it was just um, look like you don't have any feeling for this female. So hopefully now we will have some feeling for uh, Oli. Sissy, if you please help me. With her beer sedated, the team move on to Holly. Yeah. Shani must pair the couple and leave enough time to observe their first interactions before nightfall. I got here with a blue pipe, but it was not enough of anesthetic inside, so I was not sleeping. Shani is cautious to avoid an overdose, so the team are left with no other option but to try and catch Holly. semi-sedated, this agile given is more than a match for five men. But eventually, Holly gets tired. Yeah. <laughs> really sport. <laughs> Catching Gibbon. First in the new enclosure is the still groggy Habia. He meets Holly for the very first time. Habir's first meal is going well. There are no signs of squabbles, and Holly's allowing Habir to eat before she does. The 
keen need to keep a close eye on the couple during their first vital hours together. Radio Gibbon is booming. The growing team of DJs now help Chani to spread the word around the clock. Do you do the best music for life than Marcia? Barangan Ilham. DJ Jab dengan Bayonata. Shadow. Dan Kumara tetap tinggal di radio. Guys, masih di Kalau Video, Double Night Premon FM dan masih di Kita akan menunggu di sini aja It's the most popular radio station in Borneo With a daily audience of around 40,000 listeners We hit back cities, make the sound worldwide For the people who cry to hear something new Okay, langsung di intinya nih, itu kita akan gak sabar lagi nih Calloway has grown much bigger than Shani ever dreamed when he first arrived 10 years ago One night, live, sampai jam 3 pagi Shani was just 18 when he first made the journey up river into the heart of Borneo He was pursuing his childhood dream to live in the forest, helping Gibbons. Back home in France, Chani was already something of a boy wonder. He spent much of his early teenage years in zoos, studying Gibbons, and even had a book published at the age of 15. He built his first sanctuary deep in the forests of central Borneo with the help of French film star Muriel Robin. The first Calloway sign I'm going to be here nine years ago. The design of the old camp is based precisely on pictures Chani drew as a child. So many memories around here, and it's the beginning of Calaway, and there's also a lot of memory about each given. I was in Ozzy Kid, I still remember the name of Ozzy Kid, and there's also my dream when I was a little boy coming here. The design of everything matches my dream when I was 12. It's the soul of Calaway here. Chani never envisaged how many Gibbons Calloway would rescue. In the end, this camp was just too remote to be practical. But five years ago, he had no choice but to relocate to the more accessible location of Hamper Pack. Back at Hamper Pack, Chani checks on Holly and Tobia to see if the couple have fallen for each other. It's still early days, but the signs are good. to her to make her understand he is a boss in the cage. But not too strong because she don't look very scared at all. So it's good to set her wrong. And each pair will need the dominance, but not too strong because we, we want the other one to have a normal life, not to be scared all the time. For the moment it's a success because the two given are in the same enclosure and they look okay, they don't fight. But we are not sure yet if it's a good pair or not. If romance blossoms for Holly and Tobia, they'll be one step closer to a free life as a couple. But we 
Rehabilitating gibbons is a complicated and difficult process. Can I just say small to pretend we can save the gibbon? Can we can save the gibbon? We can save some individual. That's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to make the situation better for them. Even for all the animals will never come back into the world. The 25 person given infected by human disease as a project will have a decent life. So a given life, at least. If a rescued gibbon tests positive for a human disease, Trini can't release the animal in case the disease spreads to wild populations. Something as simple as a cold sore for humans can prove fatal to a gibbon. Chani has formed a special bond with one particular gibbon who can never be released from hamper pack. Classy. So Classy is one of the first gibbon I received at Calahuet. After a few years, he get pairing with uh, a female called Moy. And it was a very, very good pair. Sadly, uh, two years ago, Moy died from typhoid and Classy get very very sick and but he survived but mentally he is still very weak. Human interference has sentenced Classy to life in a cage. But Chani gives students like him the best life he can. I hope very soon we can send him in a large enclosure. But sadly, he will never come back into the wild. Classy. Overnight, there's been a new arrival at Tampa Pack. After seven months of pregnancy, Cece has given birth to a baby boy. So Cece just get her baby last night. So we just look at her for the first time. Last night it was raining all night long, so we, we are a little bit worried. But she has her baby on her, which is good. But now we have to find out if the baby get the milk or not. So we have to stay here and, and observe. With her new family, Cece has come a long way since being rescued from a tiny cage in town. Calls from radio listeners continue to flood the station with news of captive gibbons from all over Kalimantan. In Palankaraya, at least, the message of radio gibbon is doing the trick. Now, after five years, we don't have any animal market anymore, and just because of the simple fact, if someone tried to sell a gibbon in the market in Palankaraya, I believe in the next 30 minutes we will receive a call here uh, telling us the situation. <laughs> Expanding on his local success, Chani is spreading the message across Indonesia. Talawait now has a second rescue center. Almost a thousand miles away, off the west coast of Sumatra, is the island of Marak. Virgin Island. With an untouched jungle interior and no pre existing human population, it's the perfect location for the Sumatran arm of Calloweight. Marak now provides a safe home to around 
or 45 Sinatran Gibbons and 100 Sigamangs. The Sigamang is the largest ape in the Gibbon family. Chani knows much less about them than the other Gibbons, so is nervous about his latest plans. He's in Marak to see a very special family of Siamangs. Several weeks ago, this family of four was moved to an isolated enclosure on the far side of the island. The move gives the Siamangs a chance to grow familiar with being in this new area of the forest, where in a few weeks' time, they'll be released back into the wild. This family, the father Tommy, mother Dewey, baby Desri, and his big sister Suchi, will be the first ever family of Siamang to be released in Marak. It's quite rare for us to release a family with a very young infant. I will never take the risk for um, Gibbon, but we are taking the risk with uh, Siamangs because the relationship inside the family is quite different. The father is taking care a lot of the baby as well, and the sister also takes care of the infant. If the female gets upset or tired, for sure the father will take care of the young infant. In the wild, leaves make up 70% of a siamang's diet. The team have been supplementing the family's usual diet of fruit with big bunches of leaves to help prepare them for release. The family seems settled in their new environment, but Chani really wants to know if they've started defending this territory as their own. confident in the forest. Most of the siamangs in a new place are just scared to be attacked by other siamangs, so they stay quiet very long. And if they don't start to call, we don't take the risk to release them because they will not be brave enough to try to explore finding food. But as you, you see, they start to vocalize, which is very good. <laughs> The signs all indicate that this family of Siamangs will soon be ready for release. Back at Hamper Pack, the Calloate staff has some sad news for Chani. Whilst he's been away, Sisa's baby has died. A few days after Sissy gave birth, uh, we lost the baby, and Sissy got very depressed. Sadly, it's very common with, with people. They just get depressed, and sometimes they just die. Sissy was a devoted mother, taking very good care of her baby. The staff can only assume Sissy couldn't produce enough milk. When I even lose a baby and start to be very depressed, we just forget about the rehabilitation process. It's, it's why now I'm, I'm touching Sissy. So the main point is make sure they can survive. Yeah. 
Tony hopes that with enough love and attention, Cece will soon be on the road to recovery. Cece. Tony's checking on the other animals at Humber Pack. There was encouraging news about Holly and her beer. In a given way, they seem to have fallen for each other. It's already late, but I tried to observe them this morning, but it was very interesting to me the photos, but I didn't meet. But it's a very good pair, and I'm very confident we can have a baby in the year coming. It could still be years before Holly and Habir are released, but Chani's skill at matchmaking has given these two gibbons a brighter future, together. Several weeks later, and the rainy season is in full swing. After weeks of tropical downpours, much of Hunkapack Island is flooded. There's been another new arrival. Tonky has had a baby boy, Mito. She's taking care of the baby. The male also react very well. But we have to be very careful because it's the raining season and the cage is flooded. So for the next few days, all the staff will watch her very closely. It's great. It's the last radio show Chani will be doing for a while. He's about to embark on a very important mission to Marak. Okay, then I'll send us a video to be like. Changing day for the CMN family. The team are preparing for their release. It's important that Chani and his team are able to make a quick getaway if necessary. Tommy and his family feel that this is their territory now. We are all very excited because it's a very big day for the salmon, it's a big day for Kalawet because it's the first time for us to release a big family like that on Morak. And it's also what it's all about, I mean, releasing animals back into the wild. But it's always a big risk, especially for the young baby. But we have to take the risk, I mean, they have to feel free again. Tommy Johnson. 
Tommy and Amy were both born in the wild, but have spent most of their lives in captivity. This is the first time they've left the confines of an enclosure for many years. Already they seem quite at home. For young Suchi, who was born here at Marak, the prospect of life with no walls is a little more daunting. She is frightened and calls repeatedly to her parents. Eventually, with a little encouragement from Mother Dewi, Suchi plucks up the courage to join her family in the trees. I think we all have to leave. We feel all very happy but scared at the same time because we don't want any bad news in the future. But it was all perfect. All the family stayed together. So, so far so good. Now we will we'll see. This is the climax of the whole rehabilitation process. The culmination of years of work, the starting of the rescue of each illegally held gibbon. This family of Fearmans has been given the chance to live a free and natural life. The gibbon's life in the forest. <laughs> For Tani, every single release is a huge achievement. But his battle to save the Gibbon and the forest they depend on is far from over. One journey draws to a close, another is just beginning. Back at Hamper Pack, Chani has a new responsibility. Three weeks after giving birth, Tonki rejected her baby. Now Mito will have to be hand raised by Chani and the team at Hamper Pack. The fact that Mito's mother rejected him shows just how hard it is to rehabilitate Gibbons once humans have interfered with their lives. Sadly, it's common with Gibbons in captivity. She didn't have the opportunity to watch uh, her mother with another baby, so she never learned. So now we have to take care of Mito for many years now, until he's, he's adult, before he gets the, the chance to come back into the forest. It will be two years before Mito is fully weaned, and many more before he can be released. Canaanite have to do everything. Take care, of course, of the baby Gibbon, but also protect the tree where the Gibbon will be released. And not for a few years, but forever. All I dream from 12 years old, every day in my mind was just being in the forest with Gibbon around and be happy with him. And in fact, I have to fight to save him. And again, when I say to save them, it's not saving only the Gibbon, it's just saving some individual. But you realize if you really love them, it's what you have to do. Meanwhile, at Hamper Pack, Holly and Amir's relationship continues to go from strength to strength. As Cece, having made a full recovery from her depression, has been happily reunited with her mate. Okay, this is the end of the show.
Plus, we'll see you next week, seven on the show by week. For two more versions of the Steve Long Caravan Radio, 1991. There's a collection of six episodes of The Natural World available on this BBC DVD. Coming up, the amazing healing power of music for sufferers of Alzheimer's with Wonderland on BBC Two next. <laughs> 